In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can perform live with visuals in Ableton Live by treating video clips in the same way as audio and MIDI clips in the session view. We're going to be doing this through a clever tool called Evo Suite, and I'm also going to show you how I'll create my own pixely and voxely visuals that I use for my own performances. So let's jump right in. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kirsten and I'm an audiovisual artist under the name Naoki and I've also recently written the book Performing Electronic Music Live. So one of my chapters looks at stage design and visual parameters. So basically how can you make your show look awesome in addition to sounding awesome? Uh, so this video is actually the tutorial video accompanying that chapter but you can also follow along if you haven't read the chapter. If however you want to know more about what electronic artists do on stage, please do check out my book which I will link down below in the description. So today we're going to be looking at one specific way in which you can perform live with visuals, which is by using Ebal Suite and the Ableton Session View. Uh, so I'm going to break down the setup for you, I'm going to go into how I make my own visuals which are sort of game inspired pixely visuals. Um, I'm going to show you how I make these visuals in the first place and then I will show you how to put them into Ableton with this third party tool called, called Ebo Suite. And at the end of this video I'm going to show you a full performance, uh, so please make sure to watch until then. Here's a little sneak peek of what's to come. <laughs> So I'm using my song Insane as a case study for this particular video and this is my folder with all of the assets that I've ended up with. As I've already mentioned in the introduction, I'm very much inspired by video games, so I enjoy pixel art, 8-bit visuals, as well as voxel art, which essentially allows me to create 3D scenes from cubes. So the tools that I'm going to go into today is Magica Voxel, this is Magica Voxel, uh, which is a voxel editor, as well as Premiere Pro, which I'm using to create my final videos, and also Photoshop, which I'm using in order to make pixel art, and Cinema 4D. So first of all, I'm going to talk to you about how I've created my visuals, and then as a next step, I'm going to go into how I put them into Ableton Live, and use them in the same way as audio and MIDI clips in order to create my live visuals. So this video does assume some basic knowledge in Premiere Pro and Photoshop, but even if you haven't used these tools before, you should hopefully still be able to follow along. With Magica Voxel, I'm going to make it quite beginner friendly. I'm not going to go into every single thing you can do, but I will give you a rough overview of what I've done. Cinema 4D, I'm not going to say too much about. It's a very complicated piece of graphic software. And what I'm doing in Cinema 4D is not really that unique. Uh, to be honest, most of the uniqueness of these visuals comes from Magica Voxel. And also, if I wanted to explain Cinema 4D to you, I would have to do like a 20 minute introduction first before it would make any sort of sense. So I'm going to keep that part very brief. You can definitely follow along with the other three tools, Magica Voxel, Premiere Pro and Photoshop, and still end up with something very, very cool. Right, so I'm going to start off with Magica Voxel. You can download Magica Voxel from this website and it's completely free and open source, which is absolutely amazing. So it's a free voxel editor and it lets you create some very cool looking scenes, entirely consisting of cubes, as you can see here. I find it really impressive just how amazing these scenes look, even though it's such an intuitive and easy to learn interface. If you want to learn all there is to know about Magica Voxel, there's a very helpful resources tab here um, where you can watch some videos and learn some stuff but I'm going to give you a quick introduction now. So it's very easy to download Magica Voxel. You just download it from this tab here. It gives you the newest version and you end up with a folder, which if you're like me are on Mac, you can just drag it into your applications folder. You don't even need to install it. What you might just need to do is that you might need to drag the application file out and back into the folder because sometimes the first time it can show you a black screen. You might also need to, in your system preferences, 
allow your computer under security and privacy to, to be able to open it. I've already done all that, so I'm not gonna reinstall it again for this video. So this is what Magica Voxel looks like, and I'm just gonna create a new file first of all uh, to give you an introduction into what we can do here. So you have different objects, and this particular object here has a size of 40 by 40 by 40. Uh, you can change these sizes, and one thing that I love about the newest version of Magica Voxel is that it allows you to go all the way up to 256, which is a really, really big file. So you can see just how many tiny little cubes you can put in there. It gives you a lot of detail. Uh, but for now, I'm going to kind of keep it simple. Um, so if I empty this, I'm just going to show you very quickly a couple of things you can do. Very simply, in a nutshell, you select a colour from your palette here on the side and you add some cubes. So to interact with your scene, you can use the right mouse click in order to rotate it. You can zoom in and out with the middle mouse button. You can also press and hold the middle mouse button and shift it around. And then your left mouse button you can use in order to interact and make changes to your scene. Uh, you also have a couple of different view options down here. For example, you can look at it in an orthographic view, isometric, perspective or free. You can turn your grid on and off down here. You can also decide if you want your individual voxels to have an edge or not. So it will put an edge uh, around kind of groups of voxels like this, which is just like a different look. Um, but in a nutshell, what you're going to do is you're going to select a colour from your palette and then place your voxels. The default palette you get is kind of this one, but you can make your own palette by selecting another tab here with the palettes and then you just select a colour and you can change the hue, saturation and like brightness of your colour down here. And you can select, uh, you can put in voxels to your heart's extent like this. Um, another thing you can also do is, I've just deleted everything, I've pressed Command A and Backspace. Another thing you can do as well is you can use this geometry mode. So you can, for example, if you want a perfect square, it's quite easy to do that. Or a circle, similarly. Or if you want a line, um, you can do all of those things in the geometry mode. You also have this face mode where you can extrude the faces of your models into various different directions. So it allows you to create these uh, 3D scenes in quite a intuitive and fun way. Next up we've got this render tab where you can render your scene. I'm just going to put in another colour first. So uh, under paint mode here I can introduce another colour and I can paint some bits uh, a different colour basically. I'm just going to go for a bunch of colours to show you what I mean. Um, so now I've got a few different colours. I can of course also erase voxels with this erase tab. And the same rules apply here, so I'm kind of extruding backwards by removing bits. And in voxel mode I can kind of delete individual voxels. I can go to geometry mode if I want to make like a circle shaped hole. So erase works just the same as attach except you're taking away voxels. And then there's paint mode where you can paint your voxels in different colours. Now when you go up to the render tab, you can do all sorts of fun things. Um, you can, you have lots of lots of settings, but I'm just going to show you a few that I really love. Um, so you can select a colour in your palette and then you can say I want this particular colour to glow for example. So you have this emission setting where you can decide how much you want it to glow, how much light you want it to emit, how much power this bright, or you know, how, how bright the light is essentially. Alternatively, you can say, I want, uh, you know, another color to be metallic, for example. So everything that's blue, you want to be metallic and it will make it kind of reflective. And very quickly, you can make these insane looking, very much kind of, I guess, realistic scenes uh, with a few simple controls. So what I'll do next is I'm going to show you a few files that I used for creating my visuals. The first one I'm going to show you is this uh, room with this jackal in it, which is inspired sort of by the ancient Egyptian god Anubis. And uh, this is the scene that I've created, you know, just using the simple voxel adding tools I showed you a minute ago. 
And then under render, I've set it up so that these green tiles here glow. And also on the side, you've got another light that seems to be embedded into the wall, which is pink. The pyramid here um, takes a little while to give you the pre preview render. But the pyramid here on the side, you can see it's uh, got a metallic setting to make it seem as if it's sort of golden. So if you want to export your scene, there's lots of different things you can do. You can actually export it as an object and then import it into your favorite graphic software if there's such a thing for you. You can make a 2D sprite. There's lots of different formats that you can get out of this. But if you just want like a simple image, which is what I've done, is you select up here how big you want it to be and then you can click this button here and export your image as a PNG somewhere. The next tool I used is Premiere Pro and what you can see here is that I have imported some still images of my scene into Premiere Pro and I've just essentially uh, done like two different renders where sometimes these tiles glow and sometimes these tiles glow so it's just like two different exports out of Magica Voxel that have given me two still images. And then what I did is I exported a click track. You can see the click track here in the audio track of Premiere Pro. And the click track has the same BPM as my song. And that allows me to essentially create a scene where the lights in this Anubis room, uh, if you will, uh, change in time with the music. There's a couple of other things I also exported from Magica Vox and I applied very much the same logic. So I've got this skull and then also I've got this rainbow. Uh, I'll show you it in Magica Vox really quickly. Similarly, where I uh, exported it in various different ways uh, so that different parts of the rainbow glow at different points in time and I just imported like still images into Premiere Pro and I just made them alternate in a kind of random way to give me this like flashing effect. Um, here's the rainbow just as a different angle. So everything you've seen so far is basically literally just still images out of Magica Voxel that I'm stitching together to give you this illusion of different lamps turning on and off. In a second verse, I'm doing something quite similar with my jackal here. I've isolated this in a separate file and then I created a bunch of different color versions where kind of the eyes and the fur and the ears and whatever have different colors and sometimes glow, sometimes don't glow. And again, you, you can see I've literally got individual still images and I'm just stitching them together in time with the click track. The next scene that I created is this scene here where you can see like different sweets and some fruit and this kind of diamond together in a kind of quite surreal looking landscape. Uh, and what I did for this particular thing, this is where the Cinema 4D comes in so that you don't have to do this part at all, but I wanted to animate this actual scene. And so I exported it as an object, you can see down here put it into Cinema 4D and then applied like a, a rotating animation. I put in a sky, some lights uh, to end up with something quite posh looking and I imported that into Premiere Pro as well. I also made a city scene in Magica Voxel where I created just like one kind of little diorama of a city and I've exported it into Cinema 4D where I sort of duplicated and rotated it a lot of times and then I animated a camera with keyframes to kind of like fly through this scene. Um, so essentially the functions that I've used in Cinema 4D are making a sky, putting in lighting and then using keyframes rotating my scene or animating the camera. And those are things that you can literally do in any graphics program, but it does take a little while to learn. Uh, so I just feel like it would bulk up this video unnecessarily to show you how to do that because there's millions of tutorials that will tell you how. And also, like I've said before, you don't really need to do this part. You can just do what I did with my still images. So you can see at the end of the video, there is this kind of like flashing pixel art. So I'm going to give you a really quick introduction to how to make pixel art in Photoshop. And again, I have just exported individual still images and stitched them together in Premiere Pro. So I'm going to open Photoshop and I'm just going to show you really roughly how you can create some pixel art. So I'm going to create a new file and because you want it to be quite small, you don't really want that much resolution, I'm going to go for just 100 by 100 pixels. 
and you end up with this tiny little canvas. And then the tool you want to use in order to paint is this pen tool. So if it's on the brush tool, you want to click on this drop down menu and select the pencil tool. And you can then start painting in whichever color that you would like uh, in order to create some pixel art. If you can't see a grid like this, you might need to head to view and then under show you can open the grid. And if for whatever reason the resolution of your grid doesn't make sense, then you can go to Photoshop, Preferences, Guides, Grid and Slices. And over there you can choose to have your grid line every one pixels and have just one subdivision. And it gives you a grid like this. Now, if you want to actually export this as a large, normal sized image, this is what you want to do. So you go to image, you go to image size, and then obviously we've set it to a really low resolution because we want to make our pixel art. But like a normal YouTube video or normal visuals have got, you know, they've got 4K resolution or like 1920 by 1080 p So you need to have it a lot bigger than this. So you can just scale it up, but it will become blurry. So in order to not have that happening, you need to select nearest neighbor hard edges in this drop down menu. And now you've got your pixel art, but it's kind of scaled up to like a normal size of an image. So this is how I created the pixel art for my video. And just like I did with all the other parts of the visuals, I just put them into Premiere Pro and I made the visuals alternate to make it look animated. So in Premiere Pro, I have exported three different video files, the intro part, the main part, and the end. And the intro and the end, I like to just loop because I tend to improvise in those parts of the song. So I don't want this main one to start playing until I am at that point. So the actual duration of how long these visuals play for, or how long the song is, can really totally depend on my performance. These are my export settings in Premiere Pro when I export a video clip for live performance. Okay, now we're in Ableton. This is my performance session and you can see all of my songs. And among a lot of other tracks, there's Insane here, which is the song that we're talking about. So you can see, uh, even though we're in the session view, we are able to use video clips, which normally is only possible in the arrangement view. And um, all my videos are in this separate track called Ebo. So you can see the three videos that I mentioned before. You've got the intro and the main and the end bit. Uh, and along with that, I have got my tracks that I'm playing in terms of the audio side of things. So there's an intro sequence, there's the main backing track that I sing to live, and then at the end there's a little bit of an outro. And I've also got this track here. And on that track, I just have like a sliced up audio file, which I'm improvising on, on another MIDI controller. There's another video on this channel about how I perform in Ableton in general, you know, how I break my complex productions down into individual stems and I play them live. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about that now, but I'm just going to focus on Ebo Suite. So if you look on this track, you can see there's the Eclipse tool, which is one of the Ebo Suite plugins. There's also an e-convert tool, which I'll just show you quickly. And what you need to do when you have a video file that you want to use, then you have to drag it onto this field here uh, and then you can save it and it will format it in the MOV format as like an HAP video file. And then after that, you are able to actually drag your finished video file into this track, just like a normal clip. And it will behave in much the same way as a normal audio or MIDI clip. It just needs to then have the Eclipse plugin on the track so that it, it knows what's going on. So when I play back live, basically I've got this separate window here for Ebo Suite, which automatically opens. And if I now play a little bit of my track, so for example, I'm playing the intro now, I've turned the sound off because it doesn't really matter right now. But you can see when I press that clip, it will start playing the video file in a separate window and it will literally just keep looping this same bit of the video until I go forward to the next section. The next section in this case is the main part of the song and as expected it's got the main body of the song as a video in it and then at the end it's got another looping section which I'm using to improvise a little bit. So I've got like basically structured this song into three different sections 
and the videos play accordingly in this separate window. When I perform live, I will connect to like the big screen that they've got, like either they'll have a projector or they'll have another video screen and I'll just take this window and I'll drag it across to the venue projector. So what I can then do is I can look at my Ableton window and the audience can see the visuals. So Ebo Suite, I've given you a quick introduction to, I've just closed the window, this is why it's complaining. Uh, but Ebo Suite also can do more than I've shown you there, like it's got a bunch of other clips here, you can check it out. But for me, I just needed something that would take my prepared video clips and play them back live in a looping fashion and allow me to be here in the session view and be able to improvise with my video staying in sync with the sound. Thank you guys so much for watching up to this point. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial part of this video and I'm now gonna move on to showing you a full performance with visuals. If you enjoyed this video and if you wanna see more tutorial videos like this, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and press the bell for notifications. Also, if you've ever performed with visuals, I'd love to hear more about your setup. So let me know down below in the comments what kind of thing you've done before uh, and I'd be really curious to find out more. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video and here comes the full performance. Bye! Black, black is the colour of my rainbow Dead. Feeling nothing, it's a miracle It's all the same Nothing's heavy, nothing's meaningful Yeah, I feel nothing at all Cold is mighty beautiful So look at me, I got some brand new armor Shiny mask, it's coat, hat, saber So come at me if you're on your videos Yeah, I'm being serious I will stay oblivious Frame, stain and tape Sometimes I feel like my head wants to